Section 1 of the Complete Poems of Francis Ledwidge Introduction to Songs of the Fields by Lord Dunsany Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Introduction to Songs of the Fields Dunsany Castle, June, 1914 If one who looked from a tower for a new star watching for years the same part of the sky suddenly saw it quite by chance while thinking of other things and knew it for the star for which he had hoped how many millions of men would never care and the star might blaze over deserts and forests and seas cheering lost wanderers in desolate lands or guiding dangerous quests millions would never know it and a poet is no more than a star if one has arisen where i have so long looked for one amongst the irish peasants it can be little more than a secret that i shall share with those who read this book because they care for poetry i have looked for a poet amongst the irish peasants because it seemed to me that almost only amongst them there was in daily use a diction worthy of poetry as well as an imagination capable of dealing with the great and simple things that are a poet's wares. Their thoughts are in the springtime, and all their metaphors fresh. In London, no one makes metaphors any more, but daily speech is strewn thickly with dead ones that their users should write upon paper and give to their gardeners to burn. In this same London two years ago, where I was wasting June, I received a letter one day from Mr. Ledwidge, in a very old copy-book. The letter asked whether there was any good in the verses that filled the copy-book, the produce, apparently, of four or five years. It began with a play in verse that no manager would dream of. There were mistakes in grammar, and spelling, of course, and worse, there were such phrases as thwart the rolling foam waiting for my true love on the lee, etc., which are vulgarly considered to be the appurtenances of poetry. But out of these and many similar errors, there arose continually, like a mountain sheer out of marshes, that easy fluency of shapely lines, which is now so noticeable in all that he writes, that, in sudden glimpses of the fields that he seems at times to bring so near to one that one exclaims why that is how meath looks or it is just like that along the boyne in april quite taken by surprise by familiar things for none of us knows till the poet points them out how many beautiful things are close about us of pure poetry there are two kinds that which mirrors the beauty of the world in which our bodies are and that which builds the more mysterious kingdoms where geography ends and fairyland begins with gods and heroes at war and the sirens singing still and alf going down to the darkness from xanadu mr ledwidge gives us the first kind when they have read through the profounder poets and seen the problem plays and studied all the perplexities the puzzle man in the cities the small circle of readers that i predict for him will turn to ledwidge as to a mirror reflecting beautiful fields as to a very still lake rather on a very cloudless evening there is scarcely a smile of spring or a sigh of autumn that is not reflected here scarcely a phrase of the large benedictions of summer even of winter he gives us clear glimpses sometimes, albeit mournfully, remembering spring. In the red west the twisted moon is low, and on the bubbles there are half-lit stars. Music and twilight and the deep blue flow of water in the watching fire of Mars. The deep fish slipping through the moonlit bars make death a thing of sweet dreams. What a summer's evening is here! And this is a summer's night in a much longer poem that i have not included in this selection a summer's night seen by two lovers 
the large moon rose up queenly as a flower charmed by some indian pipes a hare went by a snipe above them circled in the sky and elsewhere he writes giving us the mood and picture of autumn in a single line and somewhere all the wandering birds have flown with such simple scenes as this the book is full giving nothing at all to those that look for a message but bringing a feeling of quiet from gleaming irish evenings a book to read between the strand and piccadilly circus amidst the thunder and hootings to every poet is given the revelation of some living thing so intimate that he speaks when he speaks of it as an ambassador of speaking for his sovereign with homer it was the heroes with ledwidge it is the small birds that sing but in particular especially the blackbird whose cause he champions against all other birds almost with a vehemence such as that with which men discuss whether mr blank m p or his friend the right honourable blank is really the greater ruffian this is how he speaks of the blackbird in one of his earliest poems he was sixteen when he wrote it in a grocer's shop in dublin dreaming of slain where he was born and his dreams turned out to be too strong for the grocery business for he walked home one night a distance of thirty miles above me smokes the little town with its whitewashed walls and roofs of brown and its octagon spire tones smoothly down as the holy minds within and the wondrous impudently sweet half of him passion half conceit the blackbird calls adown the street like the piper of hamelin let us not call him the burns of ireland you who may like this book nor even the irish john clare though he is more like him for poets are all incomparable it is only the versifiers that resemble the great ones but let us know him by his own individual song he is the poet of the blackbird i hope that not too many will be attracted to this book on account of the author being a peasant lest he comes to be praised by the how interesting school for know that neither in any class nor in any country nor in any age shall you predict the footfall of pegasus who touches the earth where he pleaseth and is bridled by whom he will dunsany june 1914 basingstoke camp i wrote this preface in such a different june that if i sent it out with no addition it would make the book appear to have dropped a long while since out of another world a world that none of us remembers now in which there used to be leisure ledwidge came last october into the fifth battalion of the royal inniskillen fusiliers which is in one of the divisions of kitchener's first army and soon earned a lance corporal's stripe all his future books lie on the knees of the gods may they not be the only readers any well-informed spy can probably tell you our movements so of such things i say nothing dunsany captain fifth royal in a skilling fusiliers june nineteen fifteen end of section one Section 2 of the Complete Poems of Francis Ledwidge Introduction to Songs of Peace by Lord Dunsany Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Introduction to Songs of Peace Ebrington Barracks, September 1916 In this selection the Corporal Ledwidge has asked me to make from his poems I have included a dream of artemis though it was incomplete and has been hurriedly finished were it not included on that account many lines of extraordinary beauty would remain unseen he asked me if i did not think that it ended too abruptly 
but so many pleasant things ended abruptly in the summer of nineteen fourteen when this poem was being written that the blame for that may rest on a meaner though more exalted head than that of the poet in this poem as in the other one that has a classical theme the departure of proserpine those who remember their classics may find faults but i read the dream of artemis merely as an expression of things that the poet has seen and dreamed in meath including a most beautiful description of a fox hunt in the north of the county in which he has probably taken part on foot and in the departure of proserpine whether conscious or not a crystallization in verse of an autumnal mood induced by falling leaves and exile in the possible nearness of death the second poem in the book was written about a little boy who used to drive cows for some farmer past the poet's door very early every morning whistling as he went and who died just before the war i think that its beautiful and spontaneous simplicity would cost some of our writers gallons of midnight oil of the next to a distant one who will not hope that when fame and other little things are won its clear and confident prophecy will be happily fulfilled quite perfect if my judgment is of any value is the little poem on page one seventy one in the mediterranean going to the war another beautiful thing is homecoming on page one eighty eight the sheep are coming home in greece hark the bells on every hill flock by flock and fleece by fleece one feels that the greeks are of some use after all to have inspired with the help of their sheep so lovely a poem the shadow people on page two o one seems to me another perfect poem written in serbian egypt it shows the poet still looking steadfastly at those fields though so far distant then of which he was surely born to be the singer and this devotion to the fields of me that in nearly all his songs from such far places brings his spirit home like the instinct that has been given to the swallows seems to be the keynote of the book for this reason i have named it songs of peace in spite of the circumstances under which they were written there follow poems at which some may wonder to thomas macdonough the blackbirds the wedding morning but rather than attribute curious sympathies to this brave young irish soldier i would ask his readers to consider the irresistible attraction that a lost cause has for almost any irishman once the swallow instinct appears again in the poem called the lure and a longing for the south and again in the poem called song and then the irish fields content him again and we find him on the last page but one in the book making a poem for a little place called fawn because he finds that its hills and woods and streams are unsung surely for this if there be as many believed gods lesser than those whose business is with destiny thunder and war small gods that haunt the groves seen only at times by few and then indistinctly at evening surely from gratitude they will give him peace. Dunsany. End of section two. Section three of the complete poems of Francis Ledwidge. Introduction to Last Songs by Lord Dunsany. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo introduction to last songs the hindenburg line october ninth nineteen seventeen writing amidst rather too much noise and squalor to do justice at all to the delicate rustic muse of francis ledwidge i do not like to delay his book any longer nor to fail on a promise long ago made to him to write this introduction he has gone down in that vast maelstrom into which poets do well to adventure 
and from which their country might perhaps be wise to withhold them but that is our country's affair he has left behind him verses of great beauty simple rural lyrics that may be something of an adonine for the stricken age if ever an age needed beautiful little songs our age needs them and i know few songs more peaceful and happy or better suited to soothe the scars on the mind of those who have looked on certain places of which the prophecy in the gospels seems no more than an ominous hint when it speaks of the abomination of desolation he told me once that it was on one particular occasion when walking at evening through the village of slain in summer that he heard a blackbird sing the notes he said were very beautiful and it is this blackbird that he tells of in three wonderful lines in his early poem called behind the closed eye and it is this song perhaps more than anything else that has been the inspiration of his brief life dynasty shook and the earth shook and the war not yet described by any man reveled and wallowed in destruction around him and francis ledwidge stayed true to his inspiration as his homeward songs will show i had hoped he would have seen the fame he has well deserved but it is hard for a poet to live to see fame even in times of peace in these days it is harder than ever dunsany end of section three songs of the fields to my best friend by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo to my best friend i love the wet-lipped wind that stirs the hedge and kisses the bent flowers that drooped for rain that stirs the poppy on the sunburned ledge and like a swan dies singing without pain the golden bees go buzzing down to stain the lily's frills and the blue harebell rings and the sweet blackbird in the rainbow sings deep in the meadows i would sing a song the shallow brook my tuning fork the birds my masters and the boughs they hop along shall mark my time but there shall be no words for lurking echoes mock an angel herds words that i may not know within for you words for the faithful meet the good and true end of poem this recording is in the public domain behind the closed eye by francis ledwidge read for LibriVox.org by nemo behind the closed eye i walk the old frequented ways that wind around the tangled braes i live again the sunny days ere i the city knew and scenes of old again are born the woodbine lassoing the thorn and the drooping ruth like in the corn the poppies weep the dew above me in their hundred schools the magpies bend their young to rules and like an apron full of jewels the dewy cobweb sings and frisking in the stream below the troutlets make the circles flow and the hungry crane doth watch them grow as a smoker does his rings above me smokes the little town with its whitewashed walls and roofs of brown and its octagon spire toned smoothly down as the holy minds within and wondrous impudently sweet half of impassion half conceit the blackbird calls adown the street like the piper of hamelin i hear him and i feel the lure drawing me back to the homely moor i'll go and close the mountain's door on the city's strife and din end a poem this recording is in the public domain
Bound to the Mast by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Bound to the Mast. When mildly falls the deluge of the grass, and meads begin to rise like Noah's flood, and o'er the hedgerows flow and onward pass, dribbling through many a wood, when hawthorn trees their flags of truce unfurl, and dykes are splitting violets to the breeze, when meadow larks their jocund flight will curl from earth's to heaven's lees. Ah, then the poet's dreams are most sublime, a sail on the seas that know a heavenly calm, and in his songs you hear the river's rhyme and the first bleat of the lamb. Then when the summer evenings fall serene, Unto the country dance his songs repair, and you may meet some maids with angel mien, bright eyes and twilight hair. When autumn's crayon tones the green leaves sere, and breezes honed on icebergs hurry past, when meadow tides have ebbed and woods grow drear, and bow before the blast, when briars make semicircles on the way, when blackbirds hide their flutes and cower and die when swollen rivers lose themselves and stray beneath a murky sky. Then doth the poet's voice like cuckoos break, and round his verse the hungry lapwing grieves, and melancholy in his dreary wake the funeral of the leaves. Then when the autumn dies upon the plain, wound in the snow alike his right and wrong, the poet sings, albeit a sad strain, Bound to the mast of song. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Linnet in a Cage by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. To a Linnet in a Cage. When spring is in the fields that stains your wing, and the blue distance is alive with song and finny quiets of the gabbling spring rock lilies red and long at dewy daybreak i will set you free in ferny turnings of the woodbine lane where faint voice echoes leave in cross and glee the hilly swollen plain in droughty houses you forget your tune the modulator of the changing hours you want the wide air of the moody noon and the slanting evening showers so i will loose you and your song shall fall when morn is white upon the dewy pane across my eyelids and my soul recall from worlds of sleeping pain end a poem this recording is in the public domain A Twilight in Middle March by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. A Twilight in Middle March. Within the oak, a throb of pigeon wings fell silent, and gray twilight hushed the fold, and spiders' hammocks swung on half oped things that shook like foreigners upon our cold. A gypsy lit a fire and made a sound. Of moving tins and from an oblong moon the river seemed to gush across the ground to the cracked meter of a marching tune and then three syllables of melody dropped from a blackbird's flute and died apart far in the dewy dark no more but three yet sweeter music never touched a heart neath the blue domes of london flute and reed suggesting feelings of the solitude when will was all the delphi i would heed lost like a wind within a summer wood from little knowledge where great sorrows brood end a poem this recording is in the public domain spring by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo spring 
the dews trips roses on the meadows where the meek daisies dot the sward and aeolus whispers through the shadows behold the handmaid of the lord the golden news the skylark waketh and thwart the heavens his flight is curled attend ye as the first note breaketh and chrism droppeth on the world the velvet dusk still haunts the stream where pan makes music light and gay the mountain mist hath caught a beam and slowly weeps itself away the young leaf bursts its chrysalis and gem-like hangs upon the bough where the mad throstle sings in bliss or earth's rejuvenated brow envoy slowly fall o golden sands slowly fall and let me sing wrapped in the ecstasy of youth the wild delights of spring and a poem this recording is in the public domain desire in spring by francis ledwidge read for LibriVox.org by nemo desire in spring i love the cradle songs the mothers sing in lonely places when the twilight drops the slow endearing melodies that bring sleep to the weeping lids and when she stops i love the roadside birds upon the tops of dusty hedges in a world of spring and when the sunny rain drips from the edge of midday wind and meadows lean one way and a long whisper passes through this hedge beside the broken water let me stay while these old airs upon my memory play and silent changes color up the hedge end a poem this recording is in the public domain A Rainy Day in April by Francis Ledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Rainy Day in April When the clouds shake their hyssops, And the rain, like holy water, falls upon the plain, Tis sweet to gaze upon the springing grain, And see your harvest born. And sweet the little breeze of melody, the blackbird puffs upon the budding tree while the wild poppy lights upon the lea and blazes mid the corn the skylark soars the freshening shower to hail and the meek daisy holds aloft her pail and spring all radiant by the wayside pale sets up her rock and reel see how she weaves her mantle fold and fold hemming the woods and carpeting the wold her warp is of the green her woof the gold the spinning world her wheel by and by above the hills a pilgrim moon will rise to light upon the midnight noon but still she plieth to the lonesome tune of the brown meadow rail no heavy dreams upon her eyelids weigh nor do her busy fingers ever stay she knows the fairy prince is on the way to wake a sleeping beauty to deck the pathway that his feet must tread to fringe the broidery of the rose's bed to show the summer she but sleeps not dead this is her fixed duty envoy today while leaving my dear home behind my eyes with salty homesick teardrops blind the rain fell on me sorrowful and kind like angels tears of pity twas then i heard the small birds melodies and saw the poppies bonfire on the leas as spring came whispering through the leafing trees giving to me my ditty and a poem this recording is in the public domain A Song of April by Francis Ledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Song of April The censer of the eglantine was moved By little lane winds, 
and the watching faces of garden flowerets of which of old she loved peep shyly outward from their silent places but when the sun arose the flowers grew bolder and she will be in white i thought and she will have a cuckoo on her either shoulder and woodbine twinges and fragrant wings of pea and i will meet her on the hills of south and i will lead her to a northern water my wild one the sweet beautiful uncouth the eldest maiden of the winter's daughter and down the rainbows of her noon shall slide lark music and the little sunbeam people and nomad wings shall fill the river's side and ground winds rocking in the lily steeple end of poem this recording is in the public domain the broken tryst by francis ledwidge read for LibriVox.org by nemo the broken tryst the dropping words of larks the sweetest tongue that sings between the dusk tell all of you the bursting white of peace is all along wing ways and pearly droppings of the dew and barrel the cobweb's grayness and the blue of hiding violets watching for your face listen for you in every dusky place you will not answer when i call your name but in the fog of blossom do you hide to change my doubts into a red-faced shame by and by when you are laughing by my side or will you never come or have you died and i in anguish have forgotten all and shall the world now end and the heavens fall end a poem this recording is in the public domain thoughts at the trysting style by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo thoughts at the trysting style come may and hang a white flag on each thorn make truce with earth and heaven the april child now hides her sulky face deep in the morn of your new flowers by the water wild and in the ripples of the rising grass and rushes bent to let the south wind pass on with her tumult of swift nomad wings and broken domes of downy dandelion only in spasms now the blackbird sings the hour is all a dream nets of woodbine throw woven shadows over dreaming flowers and dreaming a bee luring lily bends its tender bell where blue dyke water cowers through briars and folded ferns and gripping ends of wild convolvulus the lark's skyway is desolate i watch an apple spray beckon across a wall as if it knew i wait the calling of the orchard maid inly i feel that she will come in blue with yellow on her hair and two curls strayed out of her comb's loose stocks and i shall steal behind and lay my hands upon her eyes look not but be my psyche and her peal of laughter will ring far and as she tries for freedom i will call her names of flowers that climb up walls then through the twilight hours we'll talk about the loves of ancient queens and kisses like wasp honey false and sweet and how we are entangled in love's snares like wind looped flowers and a poem this recording is in the public domain evening in may by francis ledwidge read for LibriVox.org by nemo evening in may there is naught tragic here though night uplifts a narrow curtain where the footlights burn but one long act where love each bold heart sifts 
and blushes in the dark but has not spurned the strong resolve of noon the maiden's head is brown upon the shoulder of her youth hearts are exchanged long pent-up words are said blushes burn out at the long tale of truth the blackbird blows his yellow flute so strong and rolls away the notes in careless glee it breaks the rhythm of the thrush's song and puts red shame upon his rivalry the yellow hammers on the roof tiles beat sweet little dulcimers to broken time and here the robin with a heart replete has all in one short plagiarized rhyme end a poem this recording is in the public domain an attempt at a city sunset by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo an attempt at a city sunset to j k q there was a quiet glory in the sky when through the gables sank the large red sun and toppling mounts of rugged cloud went by heavy with whiteness and the moon had won her way above the woods with her small star behind her like the cuckoo's little mother it was the hour when visions from some far strange eastern dreams like twilight bats take wing out of the ruin of memories o brother of high song wandering where the muses fling rich gifts as prodigal as winter rain like stepping stones within a swollen river the hidden words are sounding in my brain too wild for taming and i must for ever think of the hills upon the wilderness and leave the city sunset to your song for there i am a stranger like the trees that sigh upon the traffic all day long and a poem this recording is in the public domain waiting by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo waiting a strange old woman on the wayside sate looked far away and shook her head and sighed and when anon close by a rusty gate loud on the warm winds cried she lifted up her eyes and said you're late then shook her head and sighed and evening found her thus and night in a state walked through the starlight and a heavy tide followed the yellow moon around her weight and morning walked in wide she lifted up her eyes and said you're late then shook her head and sighed and a poem this recording is in the public domain the singer's muse by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the singer's muse i brought in these to make her kitchen sweet haw blossoms and the roses of the lane her heart seemed in her eyes so wild they beat with welcome for the boughs of spring again she never heard of babylon or troy she read no book but once saw dublin town yet she made a poet of her servant boy and from parnassus earned the laurel crown if fame the gorgon turns me into stone upon some city square let someone place thorn blossoms and lane roses newly blown beside my feet and underneath them trace his heart was like a book full of girls song with little loves and mighty cares alloy these did he bring his muse and suffered long her bashful singer and her servant boy and a poem this recording is in the public domain
in amorata by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo in amorata the bees were holding levees in the flowers do you remember how each puff of wind made every wing a hum my hand in yours was listening to your heart but now the glory is all faded and i find no more the olden mystery of the hours when you were lovely and our hearts would bow each to the will of each but one bright day is stretching like an isthmus in a bay from the glad years that i have left behind i look across the edge of things that were and you are lovely in the april ways holy and mute the sigh of my despair i hear once more the linnet's april tune beyond the rainbow's warp as in the days you brought me facefuls of your smiles to share some of your new-found wonders oh when soon i'm wandering the wide seas for other lands sometimes remember me with folded hands and keep me happy in your pious prayer and a poem this recording is in the public domain the wife of lou by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the wife of lou and gudgeon said to moth when it was spring come now and let us make a wife for lou and so they broke broad boughs yet moist with dew and in a shadow made a magic ring they took the violet and the meadow sweet to form her pretty face and for her feet they built a mound of daisies on a wing and for her voice they made a linnet sing in the wide poppy blowing for her mouth and over all they chanted twenty hours and lou came singing from the azure south and bore away his wife of birds and flowers and a poem this recording is in the public domain the hills by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the hills the hills are crying from the fields to me and calling me with music from a choir of waters in their woods where i can see the bloom unfolded on the winds like fire and as the evening moon climbs ever higher and blots away the shadows from the slope they cry to me like things devoid of hope pigeons are home day droops the fields are cold now a slow wind comes laboring up the sky with a small cloud long steeped in sunset gold like jason with a precious fleece and eye the harbor of iolcos day's bright eye is filmed with the twilight and the rill shines like a scimitar upon the hill and moonbeams dropping through the colored wood are full of little people winged white i'll wander through the moon pale solitude that calls across the intervening night with river voices at their utmost height sweet as rainwater in the blackbird's flute that strikes the world in admiration mute and a poem this recording is in the public domain june by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo june broom out the floor now lay the fender by and plant this bee-sucked bough of woodbine there and let the window down the butterfly floats in upon the sunbeam and the fair tan face of june the nomad gypsy laughs above her widespread wares the while 
she tells the farmer's fortunes in the fields and quaffs the water from the spider peopled wells the hedges are all drowned in green grass seas and bobbing poppies flare like elmore's light while siren-like the pollen-stained bees drone in the clover depths and up the height the cuckoo's voice is hoarse and broke with joy and on the lowland crops the crows make raid nor fear the clappers of the farmer's boy who sleeps like drunken noah in the shade and loop this red rose in that hazel ring that snares your little ear for june is short and we must joy in it and dance and sing and from her bounty draw her rosy worth ay soon the swallows will be flying south the wind wheel north to gather in the snow even the roses spilt on youth's red mouth will soon blow down the road all roses go end a poem this recording is in the public domain in manchester by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo in manchester there is a noise of feet that move in sin under the side face moon here where i stray want by me like a nemesis the din of noon is in my ears but far away my thoughts are where peace shuts the blackbird's wings and it's cherry time by all the springs and this same moon floats like a trail of fire down the long boyne and darts white arrows through the millwood her white skirt is on the weir she walks through crystal mazes of the dew and rest a while upon the dewy slope where i will hope again the old old hope with wandering we are worn my muse and i and if i sing my song knows naught of mirth i often think my soul's an old lie in sackcloth it repents so much of birth but i will build it yet a cloister home near the peace of lakes when i have ceased to roam End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Music on Water by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Music on Water. Where does remembrance weep when we forget? From whither brings she back an old delight? Why do we weep that once we laugh? and yet why are we sad that once our hearts were light i sometimes think the days that we make bright are damned within us and we hear them yell deep in the solitude of that wide hell because we welcome in some new regret i will remember with a sad heart next year this music and this water but to-day let me be part of all this joy my ear caught far-off music which i bid away the light of one fair face that fain would stay upon the heart's broad canvas as the face on mary's towel lighting up the place too sad for joy too happy for a tear methinks i see the music like a light low on the bobbing water and the fields yellow and brown alternate on the height hanging in silence there like battered shields lean forward heavy with their colored yields as if they paid it homage and the strains prisoners of echo up the sunburnt plains fade on the cross cut to a future night in the red west the twisted moon is low and on the bubbles there are half-lit stars music and twilight in the deep blue flow of water and the watching fire of mars the deep fish slipping through the moonlit bars make death a thing of sweet dreams life a mock and the soul patient by the heart's loud clock watches the time and thinks it wondrous slow end a poem this recording is in the public domain
to m mcgee by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo to m mcgee who came one day when we were all gloomy and cheered us with sad music we were all sad and could not weep because our sorrow had not tears you came a silent thing like sleep and stole away our fears old memories knocking at each heart troubled us with the world's great lie you sat a little way apart and made a fiddle cry and april with her sunny showers came laughing up the fields again white wings went flashing through the hours so lately full of pain and rivers full of little lights came down the fields of waving green our immemorial delights stole in on us unseen for this may good luck let you loose upon her treasures many years and peace unfurl her flag of truce to any threatening fears and a poem this recording is in the public domain in the dusk by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo in the dusk day hangs its light between two dusk my heart always beyond the dark there is the blue some time will leave the dark myself and you and revel in the light for evermore but the deep pain of you is aching smart and the long calling weighs upon you sore day hangs its light between two dusk and song is there at the beginning and the end you in the singing dusk how could you wend the songless way contentment fleetly wings but in the dark your beauty shall be strong though only one should listen how it sings end a poem this recording is in the public domain the death of alil by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the death of alil when there was heard no more the war's loud sound and only the rough corncrake filled the hours and hill winds in the firs and drowsy flowers mave in her chamber with her white head bowed on alil's heart was sobbing i have found the way to love you now she said and he winked an old tear away and said the proud unyielding heart loves never and then she i love you now though once when we were young we walked apart like two who were estranged because i loved you not now all is changed and he who loved her always called her name and said you do not love me tis your tongue talks in the dusk you love the blazing gold won in the battles and the soldiers fame you love the stories that are often told by poets in the hall then maeve arose and sought her daughter findabar o oh, child go tell your father that my love went wild with all my wars and youth and say that now i love him stronger than i hate my foes and findabar unto her father sped and touched him gently on the rugged brow and knew by the cold touch that he was dead end a poem this recording is in the public domain august by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo august she'll come at dusky first of day white over yellow harvest song upon her dewy rainbow way she shall be beautiful and strong the lidless eye of noon shall spray tan on her ankles in the hay shall kiss her brown the whole day long i'll know her in the windrows tall above the crickets of the hay i'll know her when her odd eyes fall one may blue one november gray i'll watch her from the red barn wall take down her rusty scythe and call 
and I will follow her away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Visitation of Peace by Francis Ledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Visitation of Peace I closed the book of verse where sorrow wept, Above love's broken fane where hope once prayed, And thought of old tryst broken and tryst kept, Only to chide my fondness, then I strayed, down a green coil of lanes where murmuring wings moved up and down like lights upon the sea, searching for calm amid untroubled things of wood and water. The industrious bee sang in his barn within the hollow beach, and in a distant haggard, a loud mill hummed like a war of hives. A whispered speech of corn and wind was on the yellow hill and tattered scarecrows nodded their assent and waved their arms like orators the brown nude beauty of the autumn sweetly bent over the woods across the little town i sat in a retreating shade beside the river where it fell across a weir like a white mane and in a flourish wide roars by an island field and through a tear of leaning sallies like an avenue when the moon's flambeau hunts the shadows out and strikes the borders white across the dew where little ringlets ended the fleet trout fed on the water moths a marsh hen crossed on flying wings and swimming feet to where her mate was in the rushes forest tossed on the heaving dusk like swallows in the air beyond the river a walled rood of graves hung dead with all its hemlock wan and sere save where the wall was broken and long waves of yellow grass flowed outward like a weir as if the dead were striving for more room in their old places in the scheme of things for sometimes the thought comes that the brown tomb is not the end of all our laborings but we are born once more of wind and rain to sow the world with harvests young and strong that men may live by men till the stars wane and still sweet music fill the blackbird's song but oh for truce about the soul denied shall i meet keats in some wild isle of balm dreaming beside a tarn where green and wide boughs of sweet cinnamon protect the calm of the dark water and together walk through hills with dimples full of water where white angels rest and all the dead years talk about the changes of the earth despair sometimes takes hold of me but yet i hope to hope the old hope in the better times when i am free to cast aside the rope that binds me to all sadness till my rhymes cry like lost birds but oh if i should die ere this millennium and my hands be crossed under the flowers i loved the passers-by shall scowl at me as one whose soul is lost but a soft peace came to me when the west shut its red door and a thin streak of moon was twisted on the twilight's dusky breast it wrapped me up as sometimes a sweet tune heard for the first time wraps the scenes around that we may have their memories when some hand strikes at other times in hopes unbound rising see clear the everlasting land and a poem this recording is in the public domain before the tears by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo before the tears you looked as sad as an eclipsed moon above the sheaves of harvest and there lay a light lisp on your tongue and very soon the petals of your deep blush fell away white smiles that come with an uneasy grace from inner sorrow crossed your forehead fair 
when the wind passing took your scattered hair and flung it like a brown shower in my face tear fringed winds that fill the heart's low sighs and never break upon the bosom's pain but blow onto the windows of the eyes their misty promise of silver rain around your loud heart ever rose and fell i thought twere better that the tear should come and strike your every feeling wholly numb so thrust my hand in yours and shook farewell end a poem this recording is in the public domain god's remembrance by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo god's remembrance there came a whisper from the night to me like music of the sea a mighty breath from out the valley's dewy mouth and death shook his lean bones and every colored tree wept in the fog of morning from the town of nest among the branches one old crow with gaps upon his wings flew far away and thinking of the golden summer glow i heard a blackbird whistle half his lay among the spinning leaves that slanted down and i who am a thought of god's now long forgotten in his mind and desolate with other dreams long over as a gate singing upon the wind the anvil song sang of the spring when first he dreamt of me in that old town all hills and signs the creek and he remembered me as something far in old imaginations something weak with distance like a little sparkling star drowned in the lavender of evening sea and a poem this recording is in the public domain an old pain by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo an old pain what old old pain is this that bleeds anew what old and wandering dream forgotten long hobbles back to my mind with faces too like janus of old rome i look about and yet discover not what ancient wrong lies unrequited still no speck of doubt upon to-morrow's promise yet a pain of some dumb thing is on me and i feel how men go mad how faculties do reel when these old querns turn round within the brain tis something to have known one day of joy now to remember when the heart is low an antidote of thought that will destroy the asp bite of regret deep will i drink by and by the purple cups that overflow and fill the shattered heart's urn to the brink but some are dead who laughed some scattered are around the sultry breath of foreign zones you with the warm clay wrapped about your bones are nearer to me than the live afar my heart has grown as dry as an old crust deep in book lumber and moth-eaten wood so long it has forgot the old love lust so long forgot the thing that made youth dear two blue love lamps a heart exceeding good and how when first i heard that voice ring clear among the searing hedges of the plain i knew not which from which beyond the corn the laughter by the callow twisted thorn the jay thrush whistling in the haws for rain i hold the mine as the imprisoned soul and all our aspiration are its own struggles and strivings for a golden goal that wear us out like snowmen at the thaw and we shall make our heaven where we have sown our purple longings oh can the loved dead draw anear us when we moan or watching wait our coming in the woods where first we met the dead leaves falling on their wild hair wet their hands upon the fastenings of the gate 
this is the old old pain come home once more bent down with answers wild and very lame for all my delving in old dog-eared lore that drove the sages mad and boots the world aught for their wisdom i have asked them tame and watch the earth by its own self be hurled atom by atom into nothingness lull out of the deep canyons drops of fire and kindle on the hills its funeral pyre and all we learn but shows we know the less and a poem this recording is in the public domain The Lost Ones by Francis Ledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Lost Ones Somewhere is music from the linnet's bills, And through the sunny flowers the bee wings drone, And white bells of convolvus on hills Of quiet may make silent ringing, Blown hither and thither by the wind of showers, and somewhere all the wandering birds have flown and the brown breath of autumn chills the flowers but where are all the loves of long ago oh little twilight ship blown up the tide where are the faces laughing in the glow of morning years the lost ones scattered wide give me your hand o oh brother let us go crying about the dark for those who died. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. All Hallows Eve by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. All Hallows Eve. The dreadful hour sighing for a moon to light old lovers to the place of tryst and old footsteps from blessed acres soon on old known pathways will be lightly pressed and winds that went to eavesdrop since the noon kinking at some old tale told sweetly brief will give a cowslick to the yarrow leaf and sling the round nut from the hazel down and there will be old yarn balls and old spells and broken lime kilns and old eyes will peer for constant lovers in old spidery walls and old embraces will grow newly dear and some may meet old lovers in old dells and some in doors ajar in towns light lorn but two will meet beneath an early thorn deep in the bosom of the windy fells then when the night slopes home in white-faced day yawns in the east there will be sad farewells and many feet will tap a lonely way back to the comfort of their chilly cells and eyes will backward turn and long to stay where love first found them in the clover bloom but one will never seek the lonely tomb and two will linger at the tryst alway End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Memory by Francis Ledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Memory Low sounds of night that drip upon the ear, The plumed lapwings cry, the curlews call. Clear in the far dark herd, a sound as drear as raindrops pelted from a nodding rush to give a white wink once in broken fall into a deep dark pool they pain the hush as if the fiery meteor's slanting lance had found their empty craws they fill with sound the silence with a merry round the sounding mazes of a last year's dance i thought to watch the stars come spark by spark out on the muffled night and watch the moon go round the full and turn upon the dark and sharpen towards the new and waiting watch the grand kaleidoscope of midnight noon change colours on the dew where high hills notch the low and moony sky but who dear cast one brief's hour horoscope 
whose tuned ear makes every sound the music of last year whose hopes are built up in the door of past no not more silent does the spider stitch a cobweb on the fern nor fog drops fall on sheaves of harvest when the night is rich with moonbeams then the spirits of delight walk the dark passages of memory's hall we feel them not but in the waste of night we hear their low-voiced mediums and we rise to wrestle old regrets to see old faces to meet and part in old tryst-trodden places with breaking heart and emptying of eyes i feel the warm hand on my shoulder light i hear the music of a voice that words the slow time of the feet i see the white arm slanting and the dimples fold and fill i hear wing flutters of the early birds i see the tide of morning landward spill the cloaking maidens hear the voice that tells you'd never know and soon perhaps again with white teeth biting down the inly pain then sounds of going away in sad farewells a year ago it seems but yesterday yesterday and a hundred years all one tis laid as something finished dark away to gather mould upon the shelves of time what matters ours or eons when tis gone and yet the heart will dust it of its grime and hover round it in a silver spell be lost in it and cry aloud in fear and like a lost soul in a pious ear hammer in mine a never easy bell end a poem this recording is in the public domain a song by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo a song my heart has flown on wings to you away in the lonely places where your footsteps lie full up of stars when the short showers of day have passed like ancient sorrows i would fly to your green solitude of woods to hear you singing in the sounds of leaves and birds but i am sad below the depth of words that nevermore we two shall draw near had i but wealth of land and bleeding flocks and barnfuls of the yellow harvest yield and a large house with climbing hollyhocks and servant maidens singing in the field you'd love me but i own no roaming herds my only wealth is songs of love for you and now that you are lost i may pursue a sad life deep below the depth of words and a poem this recording is in the public domain a fear by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo a fear i roam the woods to-day and seem to hear as dante heard the voice of suffering trees the twisted roots seem bare contorted knees the bark was full of faces strange with fear i hurried home still wrapped in that dark spell and all the night upon the world's great lie i pondered and a voice seemed whispering nigh you died long since and all this thing is hell End a poem this recording is in the public domain the coming poet by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the coming poet is it far to the town said the poet as he stood neath the groaning vein and the warm light shimmered silver on the skirts of the windy rain there are those who call me he pleaded and i'm wet and travel sore but nobody spoke from the shelter and he turned from the bolted door and they wait in the town for the poet with stones at the gates and jeers but away on the wolds of distance in the blue of a thousand years 
he sleeps with the age that knows him in the clay of the unborn dead rest at his weary insteps fame at his crumpled head end a poem this recording is in the public domain the vision on the brink by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the vision on the brink tonight when you sit in the deep hours alone and from the sleeps you snatch wake quick and feel you hear my step upon the threshold stone my hand upon the doorway latchward steel be sure tis but the white winds of the snow for i shall come no more and when the candle in the pane is war and moonbeams down the hill long shadows throw when night's white eyes are in the chinky door think of a long road in a valley low think of a wanderer in the distance far lost like a voice among the scattered hills and when the moon has gone and ocean spills its waters backward from the trysting bar and in dark furrows of the night there tills a jewelled plough and many a falling star moves you to prayer then will you think of me on the long road that will not ever end jonah is hoarse in nineveh i'd lend my voice to save the town and hurriedly goes abraham with murdering knife and ruth is weary in the corn yet will i stay for one flower blooms upon the rocks of truth god is in all our hurry and delay end a poem this recording is in the public domain to lord dunsany by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo to lord dunsany on his return from east africa for you i knit these lines and on their ends hang little tossing bells to ring you home the music is all cracked and poesy tends to richer blooms than mine but you who roam through colored gardens of the highest muse and leave the door ajar sometimes that we may steal small breathing things of reds and blues and things of white sucked empty by the bee will listen to this bunch of bells for me my cowslips bring you welcome to the land your muse brings honor to in many a tongue not only that i long to clasp your hand but that you're missed by the poets who have sung and viewed with doubt the music of their verse all the long winter for you love to bring the true note in and save the wise thing terse and show what birds go lame upon a wing and where the weeds among the flowers do spring and a poem this recording is in the public domain on an oaten straw by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo on an oaten straw my harp is out of tune and so i take an oaten straw some shepherd dropped of old it is the hour when beauty doth awake with trembling limbs upon the dewy cold and shapes of green show where the woolly fold slept in the winding shelter of the brake this so a pipe for you how all the year the one i love like beauty takes her away wrapped in the wind of winter she doth cheer the loud woods like a sunbeam of the may this i will pipe for you the whole blue day seated with pan upon the mossy weir and a poem this recording is in the public domain evening in february by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo evening in february 
the windy evening drops a gray old eyelid down across the sun the last crow leaves the ploughman's way and happy lambs make no more fun wild parsley buds beside my feet a doubtful thrush makes hurried turn the steeple in the village street doth seem to pierce the twilight moon i hear and see those changing charms for all my thoughts are fixed upon the hurry and the loud alarms before the fall of babylon end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Sister by Francis Sledwich, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Sister I saw the little quiet town, and the whitewashed gables on the hill, and laughing children coming down the laneway to the mill. Wind blushes up their faces glowed, and they were happy as could be. The wobbling water never flowed so merry and so free one little maid withdrew aside to pick a pebble from the sands her golden hair was long and wide and there were dimples on her hands and when i saw her large blue eyes what was the pain that went through me why did i think on southern skies and ships upon the sea and a poem this recording is in the public domain Before the War of Cooley by Francis Sledwich, read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Before the War of Cooley At daybreak, Maeve rose up from where she prayed, and took her prophetess across her door to gaze upon her host. Tall spear and blade, burnished for early battle, dimly shook the morning's colors, and then Maeve said, look and tell me how you see them now and then the woman that was lean with knowledge said there's crimson on them and there's dripping red and a tall soldier galloped up the glen with foam upon his boot and halted there beside old mave she said not yet and turned into her blazing dun and knelt in prayer one solemn hour and once again she came and sought her prophetess with voice that mourned how do you see them now she asked all lame and broken in the noon and once again the soldier stood before her no not yet Maeve answered his inquiring look and turned once more unto her prayer and yet once more how do you see them now she asked all wet with storm rains and all broken and all tore with midnight wolves and when the soldier came maeve said it is the hour there was a flash of trumpets in the dim a silver flame of rising shields loud words passed down the ranks and twenty feet they saw the lances leap they passed the dawn with one short noisy dash and turning proud maeve gave the wise one thanks and sought her chamber in the dun to weep and a poem this recording is in the public domain low moon land by francis sledwich read for librivox dot org by nemo low moon land I often look when the moon is low through that other window on the wall at a land all beautiful under snow blotted with shadows that come and go when the winds rise up and fall and the form of a beautiful maid in the white silence stands and beckons me with her hands and when the cares of the day are laid like sacred things and the marred away i dream of the low moon land and the maid who will not weary of waiting or jade of calling to me for i and i would go 
if i knew the sea that lips the shore where the moon is low for a longing is on me that will not go end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Sorrow of Findabar by Francis Ledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Sorrow of Findabar Why do you sorrow, child? There is loud cheer in the wide halls, and poets red with wine tell of your eyebrows and your tresses long, and pause to let your royal mother hear the brown bull low amid her silken kine. And you who are the harp string in the song weep like a memory born of some old pain and findabar made answer i have slain more than cuchulain's sword for i have been the promised meed of every warrior brave in tan bo Kuli wars and i am sad as is the red banshee that goes to keen above the wet dark of the deep brown grave for the warm loves that made my memory glad and her old nurse bent down and took a wild curl from her eye and hung it on her ear and said the woman at the heavy quern who weeps that she will never bring a child and sees her sadness in the coming year will roll up all her beauty like a fern not you whose years stretch purple to the end and findabar beside the broad blue bend of the slow river where the dark banks slope wide to the woods sleeps feria apart i loved him and then drove him for pride's sake to early death and now i have no hope for mine is maeve's proud heart alila's kind heart and that is why it pines and will not break end a poem this recording is in the public domain. On Dream Water by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. On Dream Water. And so, o'er many a league of sea, we sang of those we left behind. Our ship split through the phosphor free, her white sails pregnant with the wind. And I was wondering in my mind how many would remember me. Then red edged dawn expanded wide, a stony foreland stretched away, and bowed capes gathering round the tide kept many a little homely bay. O oh, joy of living there for I, O oh, soul, so often tried. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Death of Swaltham by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Death of Swaltham. After the brown bull passed from Cooley's fields, and ah, Muravna was a wail of pain. Swaltham came at evening through the slain, and heard her noise like water rushing loud, a thunder like the noise of mighty shields and in his dread he shouted earth is bowed the heavens are split and stars make war with stars and the sea runs in fear for all his scars he hastened to dundalgan and there found it was his son kukukalan making moan his hair was red with blood and he was wound in wicker full of grass and a cold stone was on his head. Kukalin, is it so? Swaltham said, and then, My hair is snow, my strength leaks through my wounds, but I will die avenging you. And then Kukalin said, Not so, old father, but take horse and ride to Amain Macha and tell Connor this. Swaltham, from his red lips took a kiss and turned the stone upon Cuchulain's head. The Liamacho, with a heavy sigh, 
ran up and halted by his wounded side in amain macha to low lights and song connor was dreaming of the beauteous mave he saw her at first by shannon's wave her insteps in the water mounds of white it was in spring and music loud and strong rocked all the colored woods and the blue height of heaven was round the lark and in his heart there was a pain of love then with a start he wakened as a loud voice from below shouted the land is robbed the women shamed the children stolen and kokalin low then connor rose his war-worn soul inflamed and shouted down for kathbad then to greet the messenger he hurried to the street and there he saw swaltam shouting still the message of morevna mid the sound of hurried bucklings and uneasy horse in sight of him the liamacha wheeled so that swaltam fell upon his shield and his gray head came shouting to the ground they buried him by moonlight on the hill and all about him waves the heavy gorse end of poem this recording is in the public domain the maid in low moon land by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the maid in low moon land i know not where she be and yet i see her waiting white and tall her eyes are blue her lips are wet and move as though they'd love to call i see her shadow on the wall before the changing moon has set she stands there lovely and alone in upper porch blue creepers swing the world she moves in is her own to sun and shade and hasty wing and i would wed her in the spring but only i sit here and moan and a poem this recording is in the public domain the death of league Collins Charioteer by Francis Ledwidge read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Death of League Ku Collins Charioteer Connell I only heard the loud ebb on the sand, the high ducks talking in the chilly sky, the voices that you fancy floated by were wind notes or the whisper on the trees. But you are still so full of war's red din, you hear impatient hoofbeats up the land, when the sea's changing or a lisping breeze is playing on the waters of the Lynn. League. I hear Kukalan's voice and Emer's voice, the Liamaka's neigh, the chariot's wheels. Farther away, a bell bows drowsy peals, and sleep lays heavy thumbs upon my eyes. I hear Kukalan sing above the chime of one who comes to make the world rejoice and comes again to blot away the skies, to wipe away the world and roll up time. Connell. In the dark ground, forever mouth to mouth, they kiss through all the changes of the world. The gray sea fogs above them are unfurled at evening when the sea walks with the moon, and peace is with them in the long cairn shut you loved him as a swallow loves the south and love speaks with you since the evening put mist and white dews upon short shadowed noon league sleep lays his heavy thumbs upon my eyes shuts out all sounds and shakes me at the wrist by nanny water where the salty mist weep o'er riangabra let me stand deep beside my father sleep lays heavy thumbs upon my eyebrows and i hear the sighs of far loud waters in a troop that comes with boughs of bells Connell, they come to you with sleep and a poem this recording is in the public domain the passing of quita by francis ledwidge 
read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Passing of Quita Twas just before the truce sang through the din, Quita, the thin man, at the war's red end, leaned from the crooked ranks and saw his friend fall in the farther fury. So when truce halted advancing spears, the thin man came, and bending by pale Oscar called his name. And then he knew, of all who followed Finn, he only felt the cool of Gavre's dues. And Quita, the thin man, went down the field, to where slow water moved among the winds, and sat above a pool of twinkling fins, to court old memories of the Fenian men, of how Finn's laugh at Conan's tale of glee brought down the rowan's boughs on Nochnery and how he made swift comets with his shield at moonlight in the fomar's rivered glen and quirita the thin man was weary now and nodding in short sleeps of half a dream there came a golden barge down middle stream and a tall maiden colored like a bird pulled noiseless oars but not a word she said and quirita the thin man raised up his head and took her kiss upon his throbbing brow and where they went away what man has heard and a poem this recording is in the public domain growing old by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo growing old will fill a province bowl and pledge us deep the memory of the far ones and between the soothing pipes in heavy leaded sleep perhaps we'll dream the things that once have been tis only noon and still too soon to die yet we are growing old my heart and i a hundred books are ready in my head to open out where beauty bent to leaf what do we want with beauty we are wed like ancient proserpine to dismal grief and we are changing with the hours that fly and growing odd and old my heart and i across a bed of bells the river flows and roses dawn but not for us we want the new thing ever as the old thing grows spectral and weary on the hills we haunt and that is why we feast and that is why we're growing odd and old, my heart and I. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. After My Last Song by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. After My Last Song where i shall rest when my last song is over the air is smelling like a feast of wine and purple breakers of the windy clover shall roll too cool this burning brow of mine and there shall come to me when day is told the peace of sleep when i am gray and old i'm wild for wandering to the far-off places since one forsook me whom i held most dear i want to see new wonders and new faces beyond east seas but i will win back here when my last song is sung and veins are cold as thawing snow and i am gray and old o oh, painting eyes but not with salty weeping my heart is like a sod in winter rain ere you will see those baying waters leaping like hungry hounds once more how many a pain shall heal but when my last short song is trolled, you'll sleep here on wan cheeks, grown thin and old. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs of Peace at Home A Dream of Artemis by Francis Sledwidge Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo a dream of artemis there was soft beauty on the linnet's tongue 
to see the rainbow's colored bands arch wide the thunder darted his red fangs among south mountains but the east was like a bride dressed for the altar at her mother's door weeping between two loves the fields were pied with may's munificence of flowers that wore the fashion of the days when eve was young god's kirtles ere the first sweet summer died the blackbird in a thorn of waving white sang bouquets of small tunes that bid me turn from twilight wanderings through some old delight i heard in my far memory making mourn such music fills me with a joy half pain and beats a track across my life i spurn in sober moments ah this wandering brain could play its hurdy-gurdy all the night to vagrant joys of days beyond the bourne i heard the river warble sweetly nigh to meet the warm salt tide below the weir and saw a colored line of cows pass by and then a voice said quickly iris here what message now hath hera then i woke an exile in arcadia and a spear flashed by me and ten nymphs fleet-footed broke out of the coppice with a silver cry into the bow of lights to disappear for one blue minute then there was no sound save water noise slow round a rushy bend and bird delight in ripples on the ground of windy flowers that swelling would ascend the colored hill and break all beautiful and falling backwards to the woods would send the full tide of their love what soft moons pull their moving fragrance did i ask and found sad io in far egypt met a friend it was my body thought so far away in the gray future not the wild bird tide that is the wandering soul behind the day we may behold thee soft one hunted wide by the loud gadfly but the truant soul knows thee before thou lay by night's dark side wed to the dimness long before its dole was meted it to be thus pound in clay that daubs its whiteness and offends its pride there were loud question in the rainbow's end and hurried answers and the sound of spears and through the yellow blaze i saw one bend down on a trembling white knee and her tears fell down in globes of light and her small mouth was filled up with a name unspoken years of waiting love and all their long long drought of kisses parched her lips and did she spend her eyes blue candles searching through her fears she hath loved ganymede the stolen boy said one and then another let us sing to zeus that he may give her loving joy above olympus where the cool hill spring of leith bubbles up to bathe the heart sorrow's lean fingers bruised there eagles wing to aries and the stars and when they part their broad dark wings a wind is borne to buoy the bee home heavy in the far evening him to zeus god whose kindly hand doth so the rainbow showers on hill and lawn to make the young sweet grasses grow and fill the udder of the fawn whose light is life of leaf and flower and all the colors of the birds whose song goes on from hour to hour upon the river's liquid words reach out a golden beam of thine and touch her pain your finger-tips do make the violet's blue eclipse like milk upon a daisy shine god who lights the little stars and overnight the white dew spills whose hand doth move the season's cars and clouds that mock our pointed hills whose bounty fills the cow-trod wold and fills with bread the warm brown sod who brings us sleep where we grow old till sleep and age together nod reach out a beam and touch the pain a heart is oozed through all the years your pity dries the morning tears and fills the world with joy again the rainbow lights were shut and all the maids stood round the sad nymph in a snow-white ring she rising spoke a blue and soft light bathes me to the fingers lo i upward swing and round her fell a mantle of blue light 
watched for me on the forehead of evening and lifting beautiful went out of sight and all the flowers flowed backward from the glades an ebb of colors redolent of spring beauty and love are sisters of the heart love has no voice and beauty whispered song now in my own drawn silently apart love looked and beauty sang i felt a strong pulse on my wrist a feeling like a pain in my quick heart for love with gazes long was worshipped at artemis now lain among the heaving flowers i longed to dart and fold her to my breast nor saw the wrong she lay there a tall beauty by her spear her kirtle falling to her soft round knee her hair was like the day when evening's near and her moist mouth might tempt the golden bee smiles creases ran from dimples pink and deep and when she raised her arms i loved to see the white mounds of her muscles gentle sleep threatened her far blue looks the noisy weir fell into a low murmuring lullaby and then the flowers came back behind the heel of hunted eo she poor maid had fear wide in her eyes looking half back to steal a glimpse of the loud gadfly fiercely near in her right hand she held a slanting light and in her left her train artemis here raised herself on her palms and took a white horn from her side and blew a silver peal till three hounds from the coppice did appear the white nine left the spaces of flowers and now went calling through the woods the hunters call young echoes sleeping in the hollow bough took up the shouts and handed them to all their sisters of the crags till all the day was filled with voices loud and musical i followed them across the tangled way till the red deer broke out and took the brow of a wide hill and bounces like a ball besides swift artemis i joined the chase we roused up kine and scattered fleecy flocks crossed at a mill a swift and bubbly race scaled in woods of pine the knotty rocks past a gray vision of a valley town past swains at labor in their colored frocks once saw a boar upon a windy down once heard a cradle in a lonely place and saw the red flash of a frightened fox we passed a garden where three maids in blue were talking of a queen a long time dead we caught a green glimpse of the sea then through a town all hills now round a wood we sped and killed our quarry in his native lair then artemis spun round to me and said when come you and i took her long damp hair and made a ball of it and said where you are midnight streams of love she dropped her head no word she spoke but panting in her side i heard her heart the trees were all at peace and lifting slowly on the gray eve tide a large and lovely star then to release her hair my hand dropped to her girded waist and lay there shyly o oh, my love the least of your existence is for ever taste no less with me the love of earth i cried thought for so short a while on lands and seas our mortal hearts know beauty and overblow and we are dust upon some passing wind dust and a memory but for you the snow that so long cloaks the mountains to the knees is no more than a morning it doth go and summer comes and leaf upon the trees still you are fair and young and nothing find in all man's story that seems long ago i have not loved on earth the strife for gold nor the great name that makes immortal man but all that struggle upward to behold what still is left of beauty undisgraced the snowdrop at the heel of winter cold and shivering in the wayward cuckoo chased by lingering march and in the thunder's van the poor lambs merry on the meagre wold by ways and cast off things that lie therein old boots that trod the highways of the world the schoolboy's broken hoop the battered bin that heard the ragman's story blackened places where gypsies camped and circuses made din fast water and the melancholy traces of sea tides and poor people madly whirled 
up down and through the black retreats of sin these things a god might love and stooping bless with benedictions of eternal song but i have not loved to artemis the less for loving these but deem it noble love to sing of live or dead things in distress and wake memorial memories above such is the soul that comes to plead with you o artemis to tend you in your needs at mornings i will bring you bells of dew from honey places and wild fish from streams flowing in secret places i will brew sweet wine of alder for your evening dreams and pipe you music in the dusky reeds when the four distances give up their blue and when the white procession of the stars crosses the night and on their tattered wings above the forest cry the loud night jars we'll hunt the stag upon the mountain side slipping like light between the shadow bars till burst of dawn makes every distance wide o oh, artemis what grief the silence brings i hear the rolling chariot of mars end a poem this recording is in the public domain a little boy in the morning by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo a little boy in the morning he will not come and still i wait he whistles at another gate where angels listen ah i know he will not come yet if i go how shall i know he did not pass barefooted in the flowery grass the moon leans on one silver horn above the silhouettes of morn and from their nest sills finches whistle or stooping pluck the downy thistle how is the morn so gay and fair without his whistling in its air the world is calling i must go how shall i know he did not pass barefooted in the shining grass End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Distant One by Francis Ledwidge. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. To a Distant One. Through wild byways I come to you, my love, nor ask of those I meet the surest way what way i turn i cannot go astray and miss you in my life though fate may prove a tardy guide she will not make delay leading me through strange seas and distant lands i'm coming still though slowly to your hands we'll meet one day there is so much to do so little done in my life space that i perforce did leave love at the moonlight trysting place to grieve till fame and other little things were won i have missed much that i shall not retrieve far will i wander yet with much to do much will i spurn before i yet meet you so fair i can't deceive your name is in the whisper of the woods like beauty calling for a poet's song to one whose harp had suffered many a wrong in the lean hands of pain and when the broods of flower eyes waken all the stream along in tender wiles i feel most near to you oh when we meet there shall be sun and blue strong as the spring is strong end a poem this recording is in the public domain the place by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo the place blossoms as old as may i scatter here and a blue wave i lifted from the stream it shall not know when winter days are drear or march's horse with blowing 
but a dream the laurel bough shall hold a canopy peacefully over it the winter long till all the birds are back from over sea and april rainbows win a blackbird's song and when the war is over i shall take my lute down to it and sing again songs of the whispering things amongst the brake and those i love shall know them by their strain their air shall be the blackbird's twilight song their words shall be all flowers with fresh dews hoar but it is lonely now in winter long and god to hear the blackbirds sing once more end a poem this recording is in the public domain may by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo may she leans across an orchard gate somewhere bending from out the shadows to the light a dappled spray of blossom in her hair studded with dewdrops lovely from the night she smiles to think how many hearts she'll smite with beauty ere her robes fade from the lawn she hears the robin cymbals with delight the skylark and the rosebush of the dawn for her the cowslip rings its yellow bell for her the violets watch with wide blue eyes the wandering cuckoo doth its clear name tell through the white mist of blossoms where she lies painting a sunset for the western skies you'd know her by her smile and by her tear and by the way the swift and martin flies where she is south of these wild days and drear end a poem this recording is in the public domain to elish of the fair hair by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo to elish of the fair hair i'd make my heart a harp to play for you love songs within the evening dim of day were it not done with ache and with mildew of sorrow withered like a flower away it hears so many calls from homeland places so many sighs from all it will remember from the pale roads and woodlands where your face is like laughing sunlight running through december but this it singeth loud above its pain to bring the greater ache whate'er befall the love that oft times woke the sweeter strain shall turn to you always and should you call to pity it some day in those old places angels will covet the loud joy that fills it but thinking of the byways where your face is sunlight on other hearts ah how it kills it end a poem this recording is in the public domain Kruban by francis ledwidge read for librivox dot org by nemo Kruban white clouds that change and pass and stars that shine a while do water on the grass a fox upon a stile a river broad and deep a slow boat on the waves my sad thoughts on the sleep that hollows out the graves end a poem this recording is in the public domain 